Um, first, we have, uh, now that we're back on, on Zoom meeting, we'll just uh, make sure, I know Ellie's already on and Carl and Owen. Um, so if there's anybody else that happens to get on, Therese, we'll have to just um, maybe call them out as they yeah. <clears throat> sure um, keep the rolling tally of people, so. Hey, Betty's not on. Yeah. Yeah, no Dave yet. Um, I'll try Probably down at the town hall trying to get in. <laughs> <laughs> Let me check my email. Um, so, so far I don't see, um, <clears throat> I was just looking, but I think that covers everybody that's on right now. I'm just looking to see if I can call Dave Eddie. Dude, you want to call Dave? Okay. I'm not finding Dave Eddie's phone number in my contact, so or else I'd call him. Judy, Judy's calling him right now. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I don't. Okay. But he can catch up <laughs> if he's coming <clears throat> so we'll um we'll just move forward here first on the agenda is to approve the agenda um and i just kind of look into who oh dave's on there's dave um so carl on your end are you, are you willing to sit out the meeting we were going to talk about the fourth class roads because it wasn't wasn't an agenda item so we were going to talk about it uh at the end but I'm more than willing to put you in there ahead of time if, if you don't feel like sitting around all night. Just don't forget you're muted, Carl. I'm not. <laughs> Sorry. There you go. I just have a quick comment about it and I can to that I didn't include in the reports and I can make that during public comment. Sure. Uh, that's what I was gonna say. You could we could just do that right through public comment. So okay, perfect. Right. So that was the addition was to because I had done the agenda and then um, even though I knew Carl's stuff was coming, I totally slipped my mind. So um, we should add that either at the end or fit it in wherever you want. Why don't, why don't you wait till I make my comment and then you can decide what you want to do about it. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. <clears throat> Any other changes on the agenda? No. We accept the agenda. Second. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. So we'll open it up to public comment. Uh, now's the time to bring up anything that's not on the agenda for this evening. Um, yeah, because we. Uh, you yeah, want me to uh, move? Just hold on one second, Carl. Just for whoever else is on there. Um, the easiest way, we'll let Carl go first, but the easiest way if anybody else has anything else that they wanna bring up, um, usually you can, in the messaging on the um, um, on the Zoom there, if you put put a message in there, raise your hand up there, we'll call on you. If you're on the phone, um, if there happens to be a, a dead time space for Ellie, and if she wants to say anything, just uh, take it off mute and, and talk at that point. So we'll let Carl go first. Yeah, okay. So I submitted those couple reports on the roads that the committee went and looked at and um, I just wanted them to get to the to the select board. Uh, but as you can see, if you read through them, there are, um, you know, issues of private property rights and um, certain questions about legality. So I would uh, suggest that you, you might want to consider some of those issues before you um, so you get some guidance on how to move forward in public. Right. So that was it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to say. Oh, and I would just want to, you know, if um, clearly if there's uh, after you get some guidance, um, you know, we can try to clarify any questions anybody has. 
Um, that sounds, thank you, Brett. I think they're great and thank you. Uh, you know, the committee has done a lot of work and they're so well written, which I appreciate. And I was reading it and I, and I agree. So this was Harv and, and Dawn and, um, but it was nice, the detail and the maps and you know, Carl, we don't, I don't get stuff like this. This was great. So I wanted to say thank you. And also thank you for uh, fielding my question about the mud season. Um, you know, it was just nice to kind of feel, I figured you had a mixed committee. So it was kind of nice to get your feedback. So I just wanted to say thanks. And if you could tell your committee, I said, thank you. And the, and the reporting is superb. So thank you. Good. Yeah, I feel like um, we could, I could give you a quick update on the fourth class committee. We've found the files for every single road in the town and they actually are pretty well organized. And um, we just felt like the report that you were asking for uh, would be best in a narrative form. So that's what the, that's what we took. So, um, all right, appreciate it. And um, you Great. can get in touch with us and, and uh, at a later date. Okay, thank you. Great. All right, thanks. Yeah, thanks Good night. Did anybody uh, from the board have any comments in regards to the material that Carl and the fourth class road committee had sent in? I thought that he did a good, I did, I did a good job and um, I liked his comment on, on uh, doing something about seasonal use of the uh, of the uh, four class roads to keep people from driving on them when it's muddy. You're actually the reason. I, yeah, <laughs> you're the reason I sent it to him, Mo. I said, hey, <laughs> do me a favor because I know oh. a mixed group of some people that like to, you know, do Jeep, some people ATV and they had a good group there. So I said, hey, you know, I'm kind of curious about your I how they all felt about class four. So um, that's why I sent it to him. And I and he said that they had talked about it before when he was a select board member, but uh, he had never yep. given him a good policy. But I did find a, a informational sheet from VLCT from the Municipal Assistance Center about restricting the use of roads during mud season it actually gives you a resolution and some good information. But I was curious, you know, how they felt about it. So I thought it was, you know, it would get their um, their input. So I'm definitely going to put that on a future agenda. That's good. Do we do we know if any of the, do we know if any of the uh, our neighboring towns restrict the use of fourth class roads and uh, you know on seasonality into things? And if so, what their feedback may be on that. I have no idea. I don't know if any, I don't know if anybody else knows or <clears throat> we could ask. Perfect. So Therese on some of these more specific um, examples uh, um, with recommendations that um, fourth class road uh, had looked at, do you want to maybe take a look through those and and you yeah. and I can maybe start putting those individually on the agenda where when it's appropriate. Yep, we'll have to look at a couple and, and um, see what the we may need some legal advice. So that's good. Yep. All right. Is there anything, Carl, from <clears throat> from the board that you need at this point to keep being successful at what you guys are doing? Uh, the basic answer is no, uh, but uh, it has been a good jump start to have a couple of uh, issues handed to us the, to look into it. And so we've made our acquaintance with the existing records and we have some ideas about how to uh, make them a more dynamic, useful uh, resource. And part, I think that the narrative is uh, something we're going to be adding to pretty much every one of the folders to try to help describe and reference. There was uh, a couple of folders have things like that that came from uh, newspaper articles that uh, when or from reports to particular historians when they look into a, into a road. So it's uh, it's nice to have that contextual uh, discussion. 
Well, thanks. And next time, you, if you get another idea, just shoot it our way. Otherwise, we'll come up with something to work on. <laughs> it looks like Dave has a question, um, yeah. but he, hang on a second. Can you hear us, Dave? Yeah, and it says you're unmuted. I gotcha. Hmm. I might try just re signing out and signing back in sometimes if you don't connect to audio when you sign in. Okay. Yeah, make sure you connect to the computer audio when he's. Yeah, that's it. Let's see if. Um, where did he go? I guess he left. So maybe he <clears throat> does say. Following our advice. <laughs> hey, but yeah, he says he has a question for Carl. I am unmuted, but seem not to hear me. So <laughs> must be he's going to try again. He's just going to log back in again. So current current membership with you guys, Carl, is is three? Well, or we have five, but five. in the last okay. couple of meetings, we've only had three. We had a Zoom slash phone call the other night meeting and that was uh that worked out pretty well okay <laughs> one of us yeah. had to go take a shower <clears throat> we could leave work 15 minutes before we had to meet <laughs> <laughs> but yeah five people and um i think we could have more uh, it's clearly just five people who've been interested in it but you know um it's five people who are interested in the issues and we've been we've been kind of stimulated by the historical <laughs> controversy so to speak yeah. oh there he is can we hear you dave i think he had that issue once before when we first started in zoom <clears throat> nope, I guess he's still the same. Um, Type it. Yeah. Type the question. Say, Dave, can you? Oh, let me just send him an email. Okay. To let me just text me, send him a chat. Dave, you could try calling in. You can leave the the video on because you're not going to get reverb like the feedback if we can't hear you. That won't be an issue. But you could call on a phone. Just sent him a message that he could call in or type out his question. We're still light years ahead of our first one that we did back in March. I remember we had like, if I remember right, the 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 number didn't work or something. Remember we had to like redo it the last second. <clears throat> I think he's probably dialing in maybe. What he looks like. Or he's typing out the question. Therese, I appreciated that the agenda had the link in it and it was a Word document so we could actually use the link as opposed to the PDF where you can't use the link. Yes. I right, and then you have to type it in. Kelly, I think, usually just scans it out and I attached it because I had to do it. So no, I thought that would be, because I was like, all right, this is a problem. People can't find the link. So, and I also make sure on the website, you know, that you can get it there. But let's see, he's not typing. He's unmuted, but I still it's astounding how well it works, though. <laughs> <laughs> Dave's going to have a super deal for somebody with a used computer here at the yeah, end. <laughs> works great until it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, maybe we can hear him now. 
Oh, that was Judy. Oh. <laughs> you have to let him know he's losing his comp time right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Send him a message. I think he can hear. <clears throat> yeah. I, I, I had that issue one time before. I didn't, for some reason, I didn't click the um, connect to computer audio piece of it. And, Looks like he's typing something. Okay, does not work. I will be quiet. <laughs> it said I was connected. All right, he's in timeout. Dave's in timeout for the night. All right. All right. So we'll. Um, is there anything else for Carl or Fourth Class Roads? And again, we appreciate all the hard work you guys are doing. And yeah. we'll, we'll try to find some more projects for you, Carl. All right. Great. Thanks. Have a good night. <laughs> you too. Thanks, Carl. Cool. Uh, we're still in public comment, so if there's anything, um, well, I guess, Teresa, have you caught up with the um, other joinees to the meeting? Caught up with? Yeah, the, everybody's yeah. here. Okay. I mean, we can see there's Jesse, there's um, Leonard and Thomas, Andrew or Rita, and then the other phone is Ellie, so we should be. Okay, good. Um, we're still in public comment or inquiry, so if there's anything that it's not on the agenda this evening that anybody would like to uh, discuss. Now's the time to do it. If you can, if you're on the computer, just um, maybe just type into the comment bar, you know, that you would like to speak and we'll just call on you. If you're on the phone, just uh, feel free at this point, you can unmute yourself and ask a question. And for some reason, I can't see the comments right now, Therese, so. Um, I don't have any, there's no comments right now, so. Okay. So hearing none, we'll uh, move on. Our first agenda item is the grant submission um, for the Vermont Department of Forest Parks and Recreation that the Rec, Depart uh, Rec Committee is working on for some extra uh, capital for the skate park. I think Ellie's on the telephone. Yes, I am on the telephone. Um, in 2018, we um, had uh, information to apply for the Land Water Conservation Fund, which this is, this is what we wanna do. Um, um, Greg Maggard, um, the town manager, he wrote the application. He submitted the application, he wrote it himself. Um, he did get information from the committee when writing it and he submitted it um, and it was um, approved in the first round that was in um, December 2018 and then we did a presentation in January. Um, he and Diedrich and I went to Montpelier and did a presentation. Um, the the, the Land Water Conservation Committee had 10 towns apply that year and, um, and, um, and um, I was looking for the application and Therese um, looked in the office for me too because I think that we uh, that year applied for 50,000 because um, Greg said, well, we'll apply for 50,000 because the town has, has um, okayed at the town meetings um, um, for 50, to give us 50,000. So, um, so I, I, I'm not sure that's the amount we applied for. It might've been more because we had some fundraising, um, you know, on Tommy Hawk and Levesque. So it might've been a little bit more, but anyway, so Anyway, we did the presentation. Um, we came in eighth, eighth of the 10 towns. Um, 
and they had money enough for seven. So we just missed it. And so the feedback I got from the program manager, Jessica Savage, was that um, in a couple years you can apply again. Um, um, you had a good application, but um, um, they, they, uh, we fell short in the presentation. So, um, so I have been in contact with um, Jessica Savage since then, and she let me know in August of 2020 that it was coming out and that we were, um, it would be coming out and we could apply again. So that's what um, we're trying to do. Um, I have um, gotten um, David Allen to help us with this. He helped us with the Turan Foundation mm -hmm. um, grant. And so um, he's got all the information to help us with it. And, um, um, and, and so that's where we stand. Do, do we know if this uh, grant has any matching fund parts to it, Therese? I don't. That's my question for Ellie. Because where is yeah, that, how much? Yeah, the the, um, the the it would be that and and basically what we did because our matching was the what the town voted for. So what I was trying to see and what I put in there is that to show them that we have met their means of matching by way of the town voting for the 50,000 and our fundraising and stuff like that and see if they will count that as what they counted two years ago. So you're saying it's a, so if you, if you get 50,000, you're saying the match is 50,000. Right. And, and, and I'm trying to prove to them that, that we, we have, um, we have, um, met the requirement by already putting in 50,000 for the, for what we've done so far. Okay. So basically what you're saying to them is we don't have a $50,000 match. What we have is already in the ground. Right. Okay. Do you, do you know trees like in the <clears throat> history of doing grants, do, will they accept a match? <laughs> I, I don't know. Past or? I've never written the land water conservation grant, so okay. I don't know. I think that Ellie, I think you should ask somebody before you waste the effort of writing the grant because I. I well, I've been in contact with um, Jessica try. and yeah, and I, and and I think it, it's worth a try. Um, I'm, I'm always worth worth trying and I've been in contact with Jessica and so far she's been right on uh, encouraging us to do it even though she realizes you do not have nor will have a $50,000 cash match well she probably doesn't realize that yet so I I should um and I can um um correspond with her about that I would, Ellie, just because you don't want to waste your precious time writing a grant when, if you have to have the cash, because you don't. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't hate to see you and your committee put a lot of time in, because I know that's a that's a big grant to write. I would hate to see right. you put a lot of time into it when, and they say, you know, unless you have the cash match, you can't <clears> apply <throat> because obviously you don't have the cash match. So. Right. Right. Yeah, I so would. would okay, I can do that. But also could, as a backup plan, could we um, buy from the improvement fund by any chance? No, um, I don't think no. so because you guys still have to pay $10,000. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I do know that. And, and that we have 10000 We 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 uh, do have, the Turan Foundation has let us know that they are meeting in December, so oh good. We're supposed, so we're supposed to hear about that fifteen thousand from them soon. Great. So, yeah. So. So okay. So I will correspond with her, and see what what that what they say to that. 
Yeah, maybe Ellie, they'll do it. That'd be great. Ellie, if you have Jessica on the line, um, it would probably also be worth finding out if they don't accept the, the previous cash match, would they accept um, in-kind match? You know, like if the town crew did some prep work on the site, things like that. Like if you've got her on the phone mm -hmm. and it's a no mm -hmm. answer, find out if, if in-kind would work as well because that might still play to your okay. advantage. Okay, all right, yeah. Okay. All right. I will do that. And just, <clears throat> and I would just suggest is getting back to Teresa and letting her know the direction mm -hmm. in which you know you're able to go right. on that. I mean, you don't right. need you don't need a formal motion to approve the submittal of a grant. Um, I know at the select board level we like to know what grants are being written, but doesn't necessarily okay. file okay. them to do it. Okay. Right. Anybody uh, Anybody have any questions on the board in regards to the land, water, and conservation grant? Okay. No, nope, just, just the same things we've talked about. Okay. All right. Thanks, Ali. Just let uh, Teresa know what, um, what? what information you get back from them. Okay. Hello. Will do. Hello. Hi, Dave. We can hear you. Hello. Yeah, we got a new can, a new, another computer. <laughs> <laughs> Told you he was going to have a cheap one after this for somebody. That is a cheap. <clears throat> hey, this is a really cheap computer. It's not my <laughs> Apple, so I don't, I don't know what's going on. But anyway, well, I do want to talk to Carl sometime because I had a question, even though I couldn't, I put it on the chat, but I guess you couldn't see it. I couldn't. No. Hmm. Whatever. Yeah, I think Carl has dropped off the phone call for yeah. me. Yeah, but just, just so you know what I'm talking about, uh, as I read that, they seemed very similar in his description and discussion. The only difference that I really noticed was that 42 had was uh, uh, the layout was from another road, this old stage road, so that they discontinued in 2015 the other road but 42 has not been discontinued. Now, 99 is also have a landowner that might want to use that for access to the backside of his property. So that was my question, if they'd, if they'd looked at that. If they'd looked at landowner access? Right, because they talked about that on 42, right of way and landowner access. Yeah. You now 99, he pr kind of pretty much says, oh, it, no, we don't need to do that. It's okay. But I know from hearing in the past, and I thought it was at a select board meeting, that uh, landowner was part of that reason that came up was he would like access to some of his back property. Okay. All right. We can, I can ask. I'll make a note on that one and, and um, ask Carl about it. Okay. Sounds like on <clears throat> from what, you know, what Carl had said and um, you know what Teresa was saying earlier was you know even with the recommendations from the fourth class roads it sounds like on those cases we're going to have to go through and get a legal opinion and, yeah especially you know, forty two probably reach out to all the <clears throat> abutting landowners yeah affected by it anyways but. Uh, or we can't create uh, landlocked land either. Right. So there would, yeah. So there's quite the process to go through on that. It's definitely something that's not going to be done here in the next session or two. It's going to be a, uh, you know, months type deal. So, well, like I said, my question was the, he treated them differently, but I wouldn't guess why, because he talked about, you know, obscurity of, of where the roadbed might be and so far mm -hmm. so far with both of them so why 99 was he's ready to throw it up if we get uh the right uh legal uh, uh opinion and not so much on 42. that's my question okay i'll ask him i'll, I'll ask him i was i was just writing it down so i'll ask him and let you know dave thank you you're welcome <clears throat> All right. 
And we have a, an appointment for a recreation committee member. I'm trying to find it here in my stack of papers. I believe her name is Lindsay. Yep, go. Lindsay Shell. And she's attended a meeting, a select yep. board, RA, excuse me, a recreation. Yeah, she, yeah, she attended and she's, um, her background is um, recreation. Um, she's got a degree in, in um, some sort of recreation and she yeah. works as a toddler teacher at, um, at Magic Mountain. Yeah, sounds sound like a good. Yeah, therapeutic number. recreation, that's, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah. So I guess uh, if I could uh, just get a motion to appoint um, her to the recreation committee. So move. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. So where does that put you at now um, with committee members? Um, uh, let's see. Um, is it six? Um, because wait a minute, one, two, three, four, five, oh, seven, eight. That's good. So we're growing, I think, last year at this time. Would you have about three? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You got, the, so. you got the biggest committee. Yeah, oh, thank you. <laughs> so that, no, that's good. You know, it's good that, you know, people are expressing interest in, in some of these um, committees that, um, you know, we were lacking a, attendees or yeah. strength again so good okay and the other appointment is we have Mackenzie Hill to the equity and inclusion committee there should have been a letter in your packets for that some people got it some people didn't because I had I okay. didn't have it with me when I was um when I sent the packet um, out because I was working from home. But, um, and she attended the equity and inclusion committee meeting uh, last Thursday and she had some good input and, you know, it was very positive. And I think that she, you know, I think she's going to be a good addition to that committee. Do you have the letter, Therese? You can, I didn't get one in the packet. Can you just give me a little background? Sure. It says, hello, my name is Mackenzie Gale Hill. I'm a resident of Bethel. I'm 18 years old and just recently graduated high school. I'm a part-time student at Vermont Technical College. I'm studying art so I can one day, day be a concept artist. I have helped volunteer with Project Happy Holidays, Green Up Day, and Bethel Rotary. I enjoy giving back to the community I've grown up in. I'm interested in being part of the equity and inclusion committee because I want to help kids and others in our small town feel safe and welcomed no matter their race or sexuality. I would like to contribute more of my time to a community that has helped me. Thank you for your consideration, Mackenzie Hill. And she participated in the meeting and you know she, she had some good things to say and was definitely taking it in. I, I think that she'll be a good member. It was also nice to have a young person um you know involved in town government so i think um i i don't there's no reason she shouldn't be appointed i think she'll she'll be good good thank you <clears throat> so <clears throat> just need a motion to appoint uh, mackenzie hill so move second okay, all in favor aye aye aye, aye. aye. Um, how many does that make on that on that committee um well, let's see so there's jesse owen david christy laura mackenzie tristan seven or eight i think that's seven yeah. am i missing anybody owen oh rita 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 makes eight. Yep, good. Good, <clears throat> good. Okay. You Any wanna say something, Owen? Um, I, I did the little hand raise thing a while ago, but I can't hear you. Oh. 
Sorry, there you go. Hello, oh, there he is. Hear me? <laughs> I think so. Uh, yeah, I can hear you. Devices disconnected. How's that? There you go. Better? Okay. Um, I had my little hand, the hand thing up a little while ago. I just wanted to say um, to Ellie or anybody on the rec committee, if you need any help with the grant, let me know. That's something that I do on the side for a living. So just let me know. Okay. 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 Yeah. Yeah, Owen. Thank you. You're welcome. Eight's right, Owen, right? Eight people on the committee. I was just counting. It is them eight. All yeah, I don't know if you could hear me. Okay, eight. So yeah, eight. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> all right, good. Two committees that seem to be yeah. pretty much at uh, full capacity. So that's good. <clears throat> now we just need uh, a little more for the planning commission. That's right. We're getting there one at a time, but that's right. You know, I'm still working <clears throat> on Leonard and Thomas and uh, be my new planning commission member. So <laughs> <laughs> dangle the carrot. No that's right. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. Any, any further discussion on the two appointments? We're all good. Moving on. Okay. And we have the, um, the red motion this evening to adopt the town plan. Did we have any further discussions in regards to the town plan from the last meeting? Well, I don't. I didn't hear anything from anybody. I made the couple of minor changes, removing handicaps, so leaving it accessible, which was uh, Laura's suggestion. So Perez. So I did that um, in the two spaces. Um, and I think there was maybe one other adjustment and I made those and obviously mm -hmm. the two rivers has planned their time to adopt ours. So I told them, you know, you guys were going to make the motion tonight, which is good. That works out good because they already have a meeting warned on their end. Um, <clears throat> and then of course they gave me that energy compliance thing, which is next, but I think it was great. People were, I figured, you know, must've been really happy with it considering there weren't a lot of changes during your, um, public hearing yeah i mean like we were saying before the you know when we did the other town plan um five years ago i mean it was you know it was a lot to handle at the time because we had the bylaws the town plan the river court or stuff coming down from the state and you know it was a lot of information to sort through and i bet everybody was you know all the landowners were accounted for and had you know, the opportunity to voice um, their opinions and be heard and change some language and <laughs> went back and forth many times. So, so Trace, was there some clarification on the time frames up at the front of the town plan? There was seemed to be confusion about whether it was five years or eight years. Or yeah, I looked and it, and it says I, what my my once I did a little more research, it looks like I think you have to have one done within eight years, but it sounds like they, they kind of get you on this five year cycle because I looked at the law and it does say eight years, but yet it also says they expect you to work out every five. So I left the wording as is because of <laughs> exactly the way I got it from two rivers. Okay. And yeah. I looked at the statute and um, so it was still was one of those things that was clear as mud. So I left it alone, but I wonder if it's, you, you know, if you don't have one that you're not working on, they maybe they renew it. We'll let you do like a renewal in that time frame. But mm. I, I'm, I think we stick with the five years. <laughs> but yeah, because we got an extension weird. at one point, didn't we get an extension? You probably did. Yeah. And it makes sense why? Because when you, especially if you're in something big like that river corridor, it can take a while to pass. Um, so my, maybe they leave you that leeway in case you need that extension. Maybe I, that's we, I think you. we had an extension this year too, to I allow the existing plan to stay in place or am I thinking of something else? Oh yeah, we had, it was like a six month extension. Yeah. Yeah. There was, there was something, it was not, it was small. It was not like a year or more. Right. Yeah. I don't know. I, nothing I, I asked for. I, I believe on these that um, if you don't act within a certain amount of time, then your current one just becomes valid. You, yeah. You're still running under your current one again. Yeah, 
I think that's true. And um, but they probably plan some of that out too, because there's grant money associated sometimes with this and, yeah. you know, they, making sure that everybody's spaced out enough for the grant money. And the process takes what a year to two to put the plan. Yeah. How big of a rewrite, yeah. you know, and I think too, because you're, you know, you're trying not to be overly specific. I mean, they want you to be specific, but yet at the same time, it's a trick because you're, you don't want to put something in there that's never going to come to fruition either. So, mm. but yeah, so I made those couple of changes that came up at your, at your um, public hearing and that was it. Mm -hmm. And I've sent the copy to two rivers and, you know, waiting once you guys adopted, there's, you know, I have to do some other stuff on my end, but lodge yeah. with the town clerk and things like that. I have a quick question that just came up because of the discussions we've been having. It's not going to, change the, the motion to accept it. But um, in in the discussion of the handicapped parking spaces in downtown, I had always been under the impression that the two spaces directly next, next to Mascoma Bank, and you can even sort of see where they're the extra um, sort of white hash marks, um, that those two spaces were handicap accessible spaces, but they're not signed. And currently there have been some tenants that live on Main Street that have been parking in them. Um, and I'm just wondering if anybody remembers a moment in time where those were signed or if they were designated as handicapped accessible spaces. Um, I don't recall them being signed, but I had sort of always been under the impression they were. And so my brain had just sort of said, oh yeah, of course they were, but they're not, there are no signs there now. And hmm. I don't know if anybody else had any recollections of that. I can look in the parking ordinance because it should list them there. Um, okay. So it's the two in front of it's Mascoma. Yeah, directly next to the building, and you can even see they're they're spaced out as as though they were at some point in time, the the accessibility ones. They have the extra yeah, spacing on, on Main Street, though. So in the parking lot. In, front in, the lot. Of in, in the municipal parking lot. Yeah. yeah. In the oh, wait, lot. In the municipal parking lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Next to the building on the right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's it goes like the building, then there's two spaces, and then the Mascoma designated parking spots start. So there's actually two, you know, oversized spaces that one in front of the other. Right. So yeah. Right, right next to each other. Yep. Same lane, huh? That seems like a crazy spot for them because there are statutory requirements for parking. So I'll double check. But two yeah. beside Mascoma. It, yeah, it was more just I came up because of Laura's comment and I, I meant to ask it of you prior yeah, to this. But I'll look in the municipal parking ordinance and let you know. Thanks. I don't think because of the slope, they might not be qualified for, might be better off having them down on the front end and instead of the back end. But. And there's also specific, you know, specifications about that, about how many you know, obviously a handicapped space has to be a specific size and you, uh, how many per parking spaces. It's all, you know, I'm sure Chris could tell you that. It's all, you know, driven by numbers. You have to have one <clears throat> parking spot per X. So, but I'll look in the ordinance and let you know, Lindley. Thanks. And I do, I do know from rehabbing the road there five years ago that the uh, the major issue that we have through there and everybody that drives through there daily knows is that the street's not wide enough. Um, and um, the, the street technically isn't legally wide enough to have two lanes of traffic and two parkings, you know, parking on each side. Um, and, I, and when you get into the handicap um, end of things, you know, the parking spot has to be a certain width to be able to accommodate that. And currently with allowing parking on both sides of the road through there. I don't think legally you could put a handicap parking um, through there um, without either taking away parking from one street or the other to make that work. So it's definitely, definitely some of those challenges that we have that we've have started to address, you know, what the long-term parking looks like in the downtown. Um, but, uh, but definitely we do have those challenges down there. So. I guess that's a question I have then for Mo or um, Mo or Dave Eddy is has, and I'm trying to remember as a kid, did Bethel always allow parking on both sides of Main Street? That's a yes. Mo's shaking his head yes. yes. I wasn't sure. I couldn't remember. No. 
that uh, handicap parking next to Mascoma, uh, at that time that was bank property. So it was privately owned. So it might not be anything in the in a town records on it. Oh, okay, thank you. I think I remember seeing handicap um, parking I never remember there in the past. Or there actually used to be angular parking in front of Central Market and <clears throat> hardware. Yeah. Right. So. Okay. I'll still look, Lindley. <laughs> so, someone that might be a world of knowledge on that would be someone like Chris Bump or something might know sure. legally what you need to um, yeah to have a uh, handicap. Not just the size of the parking, but you know any type of um, slopes or um, uh, tip downs or transitions to sidewalk and all that. So. <clears throat> Do we have any other discussion in regards to the town plan or are we, if not, good to, for somebody to make a motion to adopt the town plan? So move. So move. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Good, good. And I believe now that we've adopted it, it becomes town plan immediately, is that correct? Yes. So, okay. And we have the energy compliance resolution. So this you'll have to sign. So I will put this on a clipboard and people can come in the back door, you know, to my office. I'll just put on a clipboard right there for you guys to sign. Um, so I can get it to um, two rivers. So this is something that <clears throat> we need to do by statute and um, they will take care of and issue our certificate and we'll be mm -hmm. good. Okay. So we just need a motion to adopt the energy compliance resolution. So move. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 I know it's not directly tied to this, but what I thought was kind of interesting is, you know, Remember how the energy committee was working on, well, up to, you know, one or two um, power stations in the downtown um, that has been talked about over the last two or three years. And then, and then the state of Vermont, you know, um, decided to put the park and ride in down by the interstate, which they've mostly constructed. And that's supposed to have like 22 charging stations, but I am really? kind of poking around there that they did, they just barely put the lights up, but I don't see any indication that charging stations are going in there. So I don't know if if that got pulled away or- I don't know, I haven't heard. Install them in another time, but- Yeah, I was wondering that. I noticed there was nothing, no infrastructure for it. Yeah, nothing. It's not like they left like, uh, you know, here's conduits with wires to plug in to put, you know, maybe they're waiting on the stations themselves, but there's nothing. You didn't see anything go in when they, before they poured it, huh? The only thing that was sitting there was just um, they were waiting for the um, the light the lighting um, you know mass poles to come in, which they came in. They've been erected and yeah, nothing else there. So maybe something for the energy committee to maybe look into. You know, I know the reason why we pulled the plug on the whole one in the downtown just didn't make sense to have one in the downtown if there was going to be twenty of them out by the interstate. But uh, well, there was another reason it didn't make sense to put one in the downtown was the cost was the fact yeah that true going to have to maintain that sucker after. I mean, they've got grants back <laughs> out for it now, and I'm sure that Nicole and her committee will be all over it. But part of the deal was for those things is, you know, just if it's, is, uh, A, I'm not sure how many people it's really going to bring to Bethel. It takes up a parking spot, but also it was after it, um, you know, once the warranty runs out, that that could be a pricey situation. Oh, no doubt. Yep. Take over. Yeah, I just thought it was interesting because I just have noticed that. Yeah. Like Lindley was saying, there's no infrastructure for anything there. Yeah, I'll, have, I'll ask. I'll find out. I don't know if it just because that was supposed to put Bethel and Royalton on the map. <laughs> yeah. So. I'll find out about it. Like. <clears throat> And then we had um, the Mascoma debt services note. So yeah, you can see that we I think someone else had had this question when the auditors went through the schedule. Um, 
they asked me why, you know, how come I hadn't paid the whole thing? And I'm like, well, I didn't get a bill. And then when I went through their change in terms agreement, the loan date was listed as 11, 20, um, 21, 13, but the maturity date was listed as 11, 18, 20, 43. So I emailed uh, Beth Pizzicchio and was like, Hey, <laughs> I think there's something wrong here. And she's like, yes, she's like, that's, and you can see her, I gave you a copy of her the email. I tried to piece it together. So, um, you know, she gave us a couple options about, you know, a balloon payment or re amortize or, and I'm like, why don't you just give us the year back, you know, and let us just pay one more year. And she said, sure. Um, just an agreement on the part of the select board that due to the billing error, they're requesting the extra year. She said that was totally fine with her. Did they give us back the interest payment for that year too? Yeah, no, no. I paid the interest. Of course not. Lily's laughing. But, uh, but anyway. What was I guess the only thing, and maybe I, maybe I, uh, the information is here and I didn't see no, it. It's a little funky. What, what would have been, cause there was some discussions in there about the town could make the principal payment. Well, yeah, last year we yes, could. What, so what is that principal payment? On that? So it was like the, we had budgeted for 82,000, but we'd paid, you know, the 40 something. So it was about 50, 50, half interest, half principal, but I can't make that principal payment now because the year's already closed. So I can't go back and make a principal payment, um, obviously, with I can't access. Well, they, I guess the only thing that kind of doesn't sit well with me is just that, you know, we lost our ability to make our our principal payment on it so that, in, in, you know, we're going to be again hit with interest on the full note next year. And they collected an interest payment this year from us. So they're and in a way, they're going to end up coming away with one extra interest payment at this unless I'm seeing this differently. Yeah. So, which well, I don't yeah. feel is fair. I mean, right. We could, um, I mean, you could. I know they said at the end we could make our, you know, going to make a balloon payment at the end, but I mean, that it's their error. It's not ours. It's not yeah. like, I guess I'll ask, her, I'll ask her when I email her back what this, I'll make a note about that and, and ask her, tell her the board's concern about the extra interest. Well, that, that's just my opinion. I don't know what the rest of the board members feel, but. I agree. Oh, yeah. We shouldn't have to pay the extra interest payment because of an error that they made. Their software. Right. And it, and it puts Teresa in a position now where we can't pay the principal, you know, we can't pay the principal. So now we're going to get hit with a full interest on the principal. Um, or, or maybe the payment next year, we can just pay the principal and not the interest. I don't know. I mean, I don't know how it works. What our options are, but we still need to extend it just so it's correct. But, um, but yes, I will. Um, Cause it, you know, now, I mean, either when we got the loan payment, I didn't, I was, I didn't think of it thinking some loans we get, we make an interest payment one point of the year, then we make a principal payment later. And, and it didn't right. sound when I was coding it, but I'll make a note. Now we made an extra interest payment due to your error, you know, options on that question mark um all right so i'll ask her that and um i'll find out i'll see what she said i mean monopoly bank error in our favor right we get to <laughs> the money to, we'll is that how it works it's totally how banks work right yes totally that's what i thought oh, i when when does when does the or we have to up this once a year oh no oh, right now we have to do it because the terms of change no. yes longer term this is your debt on the debt so um so basically um i'm just she's just looking for a motion um from the select board that due to a billing error we're requesting an extra year amortization but at this point if we make that motion then we're kind of are we kind of locked into the new agreement and at that point the bank's gonna say well you know Tough. Yeah, let me see. When's the due date on this sucker? Oh, because I'd asked her for a new bill. That was part of it because it was new. Yeah. I mean, I could I, I easily see if this was our issue on our end and we shorted them or something, but clearly this, and they, you know, it's clearly on their end. I mean, I guess I would feel more comfortable once hearing back from them on what they plan on doing for us on the interest that we. Hey. We're still going to have to 
they're still going to have to extend your amortization schedule by a year because you're still going to have a, you know, um, a principal payment. Um, well, I, I guess in fairness to us, if they're going to extend the schedule, then they should reimburse us the interest payment. I guess. Just well, we can table this for next time. Um, Maybe I'm just not a reasonable person, but that's yeah. the way I'm getting at it. Mo's shaking his head. He wants his money back. That's right. <laughs> Why don't we just table it to the... Yeah. I mean, what, what does the board feel? You want to table this? Yeah, yeah it's only like two weeks. Yeah, table it. Okay. okay. I will email... Board motion. It's not going to really be a lot of money. It's not, if it, I don't know what the number was. You said $42,000 interest. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, next year's interest is going to be 41 and change. Right. Because it goes out for 24 years and yeah. 25 years. Or whatever. I mean, I don't see her giving us any money back, obviously, because we had access to their money. So we were still using their money, despite the fact that, um, and we would have paid that nonetheless. We just would have paid a principal payment too. So We'll see what she says. I'll talk to her about All it. Right. Sounds good. All right. And we have discussion in regards to town meeting day. So as we know with, as we know with, you know, the spiking of COVID, um, the governor's new uh, mandates and directions that you know we we are currently back into zoom mode for our meetings and uh, you know we really at this point don't have the crystal ball to exactly what's going to happen in early march so the options uh therese had run run by these and you know being that we hold town meeting day um in a public forum uh, fashion uh, right now, we can continue to do that as long as we can adhere to the governor's orders, which um, which is no more than 75 individuals. Um, but if you if you go back and you look at the footprint of the gymnasium versus one person per 100 square feet, um, it would be a max of 50 people that you could have, right, based on the gymnasium. So uh, we typically have around 200 200 uh, individuals from the town, and then there's usually probably another dozen non-voters that come in and out. Um, so we're we're definitely shorted there. So our um, so the next thing we can look into is the Australian ballot, uh, which from the um, information that's passed out the. Um, that the select board can decide um, to adopt the Australian ballot system for town meeting day. Um, and the only reason why we can do that is it's in response to the concerns of COVID-19 and Vermont legislator passed act of act uh, 162. So it could, it could allow the select board to temporarily for one year uh, go to Australian ballot. So. And that's the key there is this is not an off for feed. This is only a one shot deal. This is yep. you do it. It's for this coming, uh, you know, March 2021 meeting only. Um, Chris had asked me to do a little research. So our, our last day to post a warning is January 31st. Um, by January 25th, anybody that wanted to run for select board or lister um, would have to have their consent of candidate form into the town clerk's office. But you don't have to petition because if you are from an Australian ballot town um, where you, um, you know, to get on a ballot, you have to you have to get a petition of X amount of signatures, but they're waiving that requirement. So. <clears throat> I, um, you know, Bethel's, you know, what I call a hoot and holler town, you know, you vote from the floor. So, um, and it's a great tradition that you have and it's, you know, but we're in kind of a time crunch here. So I looked at the calendar and our next meeting is December 14th. So at the latest, you would have to make a decision that day, um, which isn't great for you guys because 
we could go through this whole process and then, you know, something terrific happens with COVID and, and it's we're COVID free. But even with the vaccine, that's probably <laughs> unlikely. So what this has you do is then we have an informational hearing. Um, you know, I was talking to Chris, I always recommend two um, because you're talking about the budget in advance. So you'd have to make a determination whether or not you want to spend the money to program the ballot machine um, and have special ballots printed or whether you're gonna hand count, you know, and just like you used to do here. So it would be all of your um, uh, officers, excuse me, would be on the ballot and then the budget would be on the ballot. And if I'm correct, um, I'd have to double check, but I feel like I feel pretty good about this. All of your social service appropriations are individual yes or no line items. They don't go as one group. You vote Red Cross, um, whatever, uh, Tri-Town Transit, you know, I think they're all separate, but I'd have to double check on that. Um, then of course, you're going to have your school budget, which would be a separate ballot. And then you'll have, and your school and your officers. So uh, Pam obviously and I had this conversation. So she's hoping one ballot would be, you know, who's running as school directors plus their budget. And the other one would be the town ballot, um, which obviously would include your budget. So, um, it, you know, obviously it's gonna be a lot different. I would not at all recommend doing what the state did, which was mail ballots to everybody on your checklist. Uh, the always the process has been if you want absentee ballot call and one will be mailed to you. I would suggest that you, you know, that's the same process and you go through that. And then, um, and of course too, she, you would either, we already have permission to have the election at the school. Um, so, you know, just as Pam, you know, held a great presidential election, she'd held, hold a great uh, town meeting day election and people would be able to come in and you know obviously people would be wearing masks and just like she did you know for town for the presidential election which went wonderfully um so i'm sure it's nothing any of you want to hear but um because it's such a great tradition in bethel but i'm not sure you really have a lot of choice here this year yeah and like and like trace was saying in in order to get this uh change temporarily for one year there's a lot of pieces that have to get going and and looking at it we you know today we took you know town meeting day and started to back on those dates and you had to be like what was it six monday six previous one days prior to the election you know to get people on the ballot and you know you keep working back from that date and really gives us um the 14th which happens to be our next um select board meeting is when we would have to make a decision on it so um, yeah, because then we can obviously, uh, you know, we have to mail town report at least 10 days before the elections. We all know that goes to the printer, um, you know, in, in January, the end of January. Yeah. So it's going to be information. It's going to be having Lisa, you know, once we do that, Lisa put an article in the paper. Um, it's going to be us advertising in the newspaper, on Facebook, on front porch forum. Uh, obviously, we'll put a big write up in town report. Um, which I hate to rely on because we get a lot of those, you know, back. And then we also get a lot of situations where people don't, you know, that's a bad thing about when we had it in person, a lot of people would come and grab a town report at that point. So we will have to do a lot of public education about how to call and get a ballot um, and all that. So, but I'm sure the BCA and Bethel is, you know, you guys used to do this all the time. So I'm sure they're, you know, have that right down. Although you've never voted your budget that way, but. Yeah. I would think the only complications would be have the, having to do the line, line item human services appropriation uh, part of it as opposed to dealing with it as a chunk like we usually, like we usually do. That's gonna leave, that's another 18 or so uh, slots that will have to be voted on. Yep, I know it's true. I've seen other towns do it, and sometimes it takes up for towns to do a lot of them. It's like one whole side of a legal size ballot, Paul. But you know, even though you vote that as one question, you allow conversation on all parts of it. Do you know what I mean? Yes. So, you know, so I think that's why it's separate. But of course, I, I will look into that um, uh, and double check. But I have seen it that way in the past. I actually know towns that went 
to Australian Bell on purpose for that article because they felt that people would vote stuff down and they didn't. So, <laughs> so but you're right. It, it's a lot of uh, a lot of the ballot is is that. So well, my talk- opinion is that. Go ahead, Therese. No, that's it. No, my opinion is I think we ought to just. Uh, uh, it's pretty much mandated we got to do this so we might as well agree to it tonight and so that Therese can get going on what she's got to do to get it together and some of it's Pam you know she we talked um she knows somebody who has a ballot um that they because they do this you know for towns that do this every year it's piece of cake I I guess the question is (laughs) whether or not the select board wants to pay the money to have the ballots uh specially printed so and also program the card for the tabulator or do they just want to hand count it um what's the expense on the card pam you know pam's out this week my my guess is that you're talking 800 to a thousand whoa because i'm pretty sure i mean i haven't done it for a few years but i'm pretty sure that when i used to pay lhs five or 800 and that was a few years ago so my guess is it's got to be eight or more um and then of course the ballots have to be specially printed because you notice they have all those little black lines around it It matches the counter so they would have to go um i don't know who she uses i used to use l brown l brown and sons and they print it and make sure it goes with the card and then it all goes through the reader but Certainly, we're, what we could do is certainly Pam um, and I could make phone calls to get actual costs on that. So I don't think you need to decide where the ballot is going to be printed um, because the consent of candidate forms aren't even due until January 25th. So you could approve the town meeting portion just so we could start looking into stuff and getting costs. Um, and letting people folks know um, that we're going to go that route, and plus it would help me with the warning and some other mm-hmm. stuff. But um, then Pam, when she gets back from vacation next week, she could call LHS um, and you know and and L Brown and Sons and get costs. So then on the 14th we could give you an estimate, and you could choose either hand count or machine. Obviously the machine is sweet, <laughs> you know, and it goes through Bing Bang, you're done. Uh, you know, and, and obviously, I think Dave and I are the only. I think Dave and I are the only ones that have actually hand counted for elections and things, aren't we, Dave? Yeah, I, I have. <laughs> yeah, well, and I wonder I too is if they, um, you know, if we're going to find out that this is one of those costs that we're going to get reimbursed for through the CARE Act or something. I don't know. We think I, they I would qualify it. somehow. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know, yeah. but I'll. Um, I can well <clears throat> have her get accurate costs. Mm-hmm. And the other thing we'd have to deal with is if there are any write-in. Um, I know. <laughs> you know write-in names on some of the candidates. Yep. And that always happens, right? I mean, especially for local elections, that's a big thing. And yep. and if you have an empty list or seat, for example, um, but still, you know, the laws, you got to look at every ballot anyways. But at least if you went through the machine, you'd have a better idea of how many write-ins you were looking for, um, mm-hmm. certainly to balance. So, um, you know, I mean, I can- and you, and you probably have to figure into, I mean, typically at town meeting day, we have, you know, 200 votes from the floor. Um, 160. And I, I would expect going to Australian ballot, you'll probably have more. Um, oh, yeah. So you just gotta kind of, you know, if we do count them by hand, you know, that. Yeah, you could be doing 200 more. could turn into 400, you know, but or uh, more, especially because just something to think, think about there when we are talking about um, yeah. that piece of it. So especially, you know, you have people that just got used, they all voted the presidential, you know, election by mail. So people are used are, are you know, mm-hmm. are understanding that process better than they ever were. So you're right. I mean, you could see you know, you could see, you know, 800 people and all of a sudden you're going, ah, you know, I don't want to be hand counting. Mm. If we, yeah. If we did an Australian ballot then it would be an all day thing, right? A seven to seven kind of a yeah. time frame. Yeah. Yeah. Or whatever hours you normally run. Yeah. yeah. 
I think they do that in Randolph too. There's several of their um, articles that are voted Australian ballot. Yep. Royalton does too. Okay. Um, but just so you know, it's it's a one shot deal. It's not every year after. But Chris, I think Lenny has a question. I have a question. If you are going to spend this money to do this for the Australian ballot, and you don't get reimbursed, what's the reason this can't continue? What's the reason? Oh, that you can't do it from year to year? Because I think this, to me, it sounds like a great way to get more people involved in the town issues. So what's the reason, like, like let's say you, you go and you do the Australian ballots, you get the machines, you do all that money you're putting out there. So, so typically, um, well, a two-part uh, two answer on it. So typically in order, the Vermont legislation is allowing the select boards to make a temporary decision to move to, if you do in-person elections, to go to um, this Australian ballot for just one year. If the town wanted to, let's say, go to Australian ballot permanently, that would have to be voted on by the voters so it would have to be a its own warning uh, uh to you know to everybody to go to one the australian ballot i do know in you know mo and mo and you know others have been here longer than i have i mean the 15 years i've been here uh well some of that neat neatness about how we do our elections and you know we even have you know tv stations that show up because you know we're probably one of a handful left in the state that still do meetings in person. And, you know, it's kind of a, it's a uniqueness of our town, of which, you know, people take, um, people take a part of their day um, to come and, and literally voice their opinions on the articles as they're brought forward. So, um, but does know, voting, just, not to interrupt you, but does voting this way negate still having the town meeting so people can do that? Yes. Yeah, it's like so, one or the other. Oh. Okay. Yeah, so what happens yeah. is with an Australian ballot is you have to have informational meetings. So okay. then, you know, within X amount of days prior to town meeting, you have an informational meeting, which uh, my experience coming from a town that used to vote Australian ballot, not a lot of people attend. And then um, there's that, you know, you don't have that face-to-face -face discussion right. about a budget item. They just have either hopefully read something you've published, read their town report, or, um, you know, attended one of your budget informationals. Um, is there, Bethel yeah. does a great job because, you know, they have pie and they have all their committees out and people get to see each other. And it's this really wonderful way to connect and talk where if you go Australian ballot, um, you, you lose that. I mean, we still had Australian, you still had, we still had town meeting um, at night and and we voted our budget only off the floor. All the officers were election were elected the next day via Australian ballot. But um, I think coming to Bethel was a great, you know, to see it like that is just really such a Vermont tradition. It's kind of neat to, you know, to see and be able to participate in. And, and um, I think it's that nice um, sort of way to connect with people. And also too, Vermont law has changed. So you, you know, your employer there's rules about them giving you town meeting off and how that works. There's specific state statute on that now. So ho hopefully that answered your question, Lenny, um, you know, kind of two part on how, how we could go about doing it permanently if you wanted to, and then, you know. It does, but I'm still wondering why can't we have the best of both worlds? <laughs> Just yeah. to play devil's advocate, like, um, I'm looking at it from a perspective of getting more people involved. And if you say to me only a certain number of people come to the town meeting, and then you say with this Australian ballot, you might get double that, double that kind of participation in the voting processes, then why can't we do both still? You know what I mean? I'm looking at, I'm just playing devil's advocate. Right. Yeah, no, no okay. doubt. I mean, and I'm, I'm sure, and you know, maybe it's something to look into. It's, you know, there's definitely pros and cons to everything, right? Yeah. Uh, I, you know, I know one of the really cool things that I liked about it was um, when I first came, um, because the town I lived in previously, that's what you did. You you got a packet in the mail, 
you know, it, it told you everything that you were going to vote on. They had informational meetings, but you're probably more apt to not, not visit the informational meeting. <clears throat> and then you kind of went, you went to the vote. I, I wouldn't say not as informed, but, you know, you go vote, you go vote, and then, you know, there was kind of like a disconnect. It was, you know, there wasn't really that connection. And then coming to Bethel was kind of neat because the first year I, you know, lived here was, you know, you're all packed in a gymnasium. Um, I came through when there was, there were some budgeting challenges. So there were people that got up and voiced their opinion about the budget and what they didn't want to see or what they wanted to see or, or, you know, making tweaks to the budget at the last minute, like, you know, instead of whatever, instead of $30,000 of this, we would like to see 40. And then they would make an adjustment from the floor to vote on that. And, and the process is really cool. And, and, you know, you would have people that maybe on that day would run for some sort of position that normally maybe they wouldn't have, you know, because yeah. uh, it was open and, and they get up and make a speech and, you know, it, you know, they got nominated by somebody and second, it was pretty, it's a cool process. It really is. And it's, it is. It it's is. really too bad that more people would or don't take the time to participate in it. Cause it's really a, to see it work is really cool. So. Um, That's true. And there is, option. I, I you can, I'm sorry. And you can do some, you can do, maybe you just vote your officers by Australian ballot, but not your budget. So there's different ways, you know, different towns do it. But yeah, I think, I think that Chris hit the nail on the head by saying it's, it's unfortunate. Sometimes people don't make the effort to come because it is a um, neat process. And I know towns that have changed their town meeting from a, a you know, a Monday or Tuesday to a Saturday and it has not changed. They still got the you know same amount of people, maybe just a little bit different group, but um, didn't really change their turnout. Yeah. Um, my experience was a little different, I have to say. When we first moved here, I went to the to the first town meeting after we moved. And if you live in this town for a long time, it might be different because you know a lot of people. I didn't knew anybody, and I felt a little intimidated because. Mm -hmm. uh, I was asking myself, like, okay, if there's a, an, an item that I wanted to vote against with Robert's rule, being maybe the only person in the room who says nay, you know, I, I didn't feel really that that great about it. So for me mm -hmm. personally, it, it wasn't all that that wonderful, you know. Yeah. So that's just my experience. Sure, I think that's the case when you're, you know, sure if you're if you're feeling that way, and I think it's, I think that probably occurs even if you are a long time resident. Yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. People are like, oh, you know, I've got it, but, um, but sometimes it, it's good because a no isn't met with this, uh, you know, it sometimes it's met with a really good discussion or someone will be like, oh, hey, you know, I didn't think of it that way. So um, I always felt that those nays are, were sometimes welcome because you were helped everybody talk about it to figure out, see the other side or why someone felt that way. So. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Plus you're missing really I think another thing and you know we could <laughs> we could probably talk you know probably have a whole select board meeting in regards to you know the election process in town okay. you know and, and typically you know when we do have informational meetings you will see that you know our attendance on an informational meeting if that's the town plan or anything else is usually you know maybe 20 people you know at the most um, where another thing for having it in person is you have 200 people in a room, right? And, you know, it, it, you know, they, if they want to um, change something or, you know, it, it, a lot of people are heard at once where, you know, 20 people get on and, you know, then, then you're only up to 20 people changing the budget, let's say, rather than 200 people. But in ideal situation, it'd be nice for everybody to turn out, right? So, plus there's pie. Plus there's pie and you get to see, <laughs> local legislators that will come and talk um, that normally you wouldn't get to see that. Um, our committees, the Girl Scouts come do um, cookies, you know, there's, so there's it's usually, we try to do a little more of an event than just voting, so. But do we want to, um, do we want to pose a motion tonight to adopt the Australian ballot system for temporary voting in the March 2nd, 2020? I, I think Leonard had something else to say. 
Well, just a question on, I wasn't quite clear on the town meeting. How is that going to take place? Or is that going to take place? So what, so what will happen, Lenny, is if we, if we decide to go to Australian ballot, everything that normally we would do from the floor now would be on a ballot system. Right. So, so on that day, you'll have the whole day to go to the polls to vote, the candidates, so understood. the budget. That's and, what I understood. Okay, I just wanted to make sure. Okay. And then what we'll do is we'll end up having uh, probably two informational meetings right. Uh, right. prior to that to go over all the particulars of not just what's in the budget, but candidates that are running um, and any other nuances. Right. Right. So okay. those would be Zoom meetings. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So, so um, this is Ellie. Wouldn't it be March second, twenty twenty one, instead of March second, twenty twenty? Yes. Actually, I forgot to change that. I had a note at the office. And I think it's still on my desk. Thomas uh, emailed me and said, "Hey, didn't you mean twenty twenty one?" And I was like, "Oh, yes, I did." So thank you, Ellie. Well, we'd all like to go back to March second, twenty twenty, because we. Yeah, point didn't so, have um, those issues, right? <laughs> yeah, Thomas emailed me today and I had a note to change it and uh, I forgot. So yes, thank you, Ellie. And thank you, Thomas. I, that's what happens when you're doing six things at once. You <laughs> away. We're going back in time. That's right. So once we decide that we want to go this route, if we do, then there's no going back to the other way if for some reason something happens that uh, those restrictions are removed for as far as uh, numbers of people right and and but what they're saying is in the in the um, literature we received was uh, they were saying we could do it as close as 30 days prior I mean how right. in the Lord's name would you even be prepared to do that <laughs> and and of course yes you know uh, Lord willing we've got a couple vaccines approved by then but really in all likelihood the odds, of everybody being vaccinated and us getting permission to do this um, are unlikely. I mean, I don't know. I've heard rumors yeah. about other towns going, moving it to a different month so they can hold it outside. And I was like, that's yeah. Well, I mean, crazy. that's another option you could do is you could move your meeting to another date. Um, but as far as the vaccine goes, it sounds like, <clears throat> you know, that. Um, in the early January, and if everything goes well, that's when they'll start vaccinating individuals. And it's a two-part vaccination, so if there's 40 million vaccinations, that's only 20 million people that are going to get vaccinated. So, right. Um, and then they said, you know, obviously that'll be high risk, and uh, and and then anyway, it's not high risk. It's more more in like next summer. So, um, right. And I, you know, and the idea of putting it off is just. I don't know that that's difficult too. I think people are used to it and, and um, you know, when town meeting is, and even, mm. you know, someone, maybe it was D tree or Pam, someone was telling me someone's going to put it off till April and do it outside. She's like April in Vermont <laughs> a gamble. I don't know. I might rather do it in March. Yeah. I, I you know, <laughs> so I was like, yeah. So yeah, if something changes then. I don't know if it was last year or the year before, but we had town meeting day and it was really warm that day. I don't, maybe it was maybe it was the year before because I remember just yeah. just going in on just my dress shirt and didn't have a coat and just warm. Yeah, I so even so the the good thing is this: if the things changed, while we would still vote Australian ballot, you could at least do your informational hearings in person. Yeah, so, right. Yep. You know that would be the only exactly. thing I could think of, Paul, that would change. How could you do that if you're limited? I mean, if we had that at the town hall and had no, I'm saying if a things a lot of people that wanted to come to that. Yeah, I'm saying only if things changed. If oh, things oh, okay. Changed, uh, thank you. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's what I meant. Is right. that the only part I see that we would be able to change? If, if yes, if they increase the amount of people we could have. Mm -hmm. So what does the board feel? Do we want to make a motion to to move uh, the 2021 town meeting to Australian ballot system? I guess I guess I would like to see the dollars. How how much for the do the to do the machine? 
Uh, is there extra amount of money for the ballot to work in the machine? Is it uh, eight hundred dollars? Is it eight thousand dollars? Well, we're not making that decision. No, we're not so doing that right now. This yeah. is just about whether or not we'll vote by Australian ballot, not how we'll do it. Well, if you if you say you're going to do it by Australian ballot, you've made that decision. Well, yeah, well we, as soon as you make that, as soon as you say Australian ballot, you've decided you're going to spend that money. No, she's saying I said what I said earlier was I'd give you a cost so you guys could decide on December 14th either you're going to hand count it or you're going to go to the machine and have it um, programmed and have the ballots printed. So that's, that's what I was saying. On the 14th, I'll give you a, a cost for you to make a choice um, on how yeah, you're going to count it. That's all I'm asking. Yeah, yeah, no, that's what I'm saying is I, yeah. And I could be high on my estimate. It's been a while since I've been a town clerk. So, um, but, um, but yeah. I'll, that's that's number. Number. I'll, I'll go with whatever you guys say. That's my vote. Yeah, I think Pam told me that number was pretty close. I think she had 700, something like that. Yeah. I mean, again, I mean, we, you know, we, we could wait to the 14th to make the final decision and Therese could start doing things behind the scenes as it seems to be favorable to start going that direction. And, you know, we could get some final information on what printing would cost, I guess. Um, sure. That's what we want to do or. Yeah, I mean, the, you know, it's, it's a, the only thing I'm going to do is I will get costs or, you know, from LHS and from LH Brown and Sons about the ballot. I will also ask out there if they think we're going to get any money for this, for the, you know, from the CARES Act to, um, to reimburse ourselves mm -hmm. for this. And, um, uh, you know, and then I'll know for drafting the warning. Um, so that's fine. I don't, you know, I don't think that if you don't want to make a decision tonight, that's fine. I don't have a problem with that. I'll continue to move forward. Obviously, let's be frank. We don't have a choice. You're going Australian ballot because you don't have a choice. You can't legally do this any other way. So I'm happy to move forward and get you some prices. And then we'll take a final vote on the 14th, whether you're going to hand count it or whether you're going to um, program the machine. And I'll also see if maybe if uh, anybody knows if we're going to get any reimbursement of those costs. So we did get approval for That's, our grant that for so far for COVID, but we'll see if they're going to let us add to it. That's all immaterial now. I mean, we, all we're doing is kicking the date down the road. So we might as well decide to do it tonight and then we'll figure out how we're going to pay for it, which way we want to pay for it. Because all we're doing is kicking the can down the road for the date of when we're, because we got to do it. Yeah. yeah. You're right. Okay. So I guess um, if somebody wants to make a motion. So move. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Looks like the ayes have it. Okay. And then Therese, you'll give us, <clears throat> for the 14th, you'll give us some information on what it will come between let's say regular printing for the ballots versus if we went to the machine. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah, absolutely. Now, can we, this information packet you gave us from Vermont League of City and Towns, very informative mm -hmm. about that. Can we put, uh, put that on the website, the town website? Sure. So we can refer people to it that have questions. Uh, once the word gets out that we've gone this route, we could direct them to, you know, to look at this, information packet it really covers pretty much everything yeah they did a good job with breaking it out mm. yeah. i can also do a post um on front porch forum and put a link to it there too a link yeah yeah, yeah. And, we'll, and we'll definitely have to figure out how we're gonna inform everybody on you know because now there's gonna be different deadlines right there's gonna be yeah. a deadline to uh, if you want to run for a position there's gonna be deadline for um you know, printing and, you know, everything else that comes with it. So I don't know how we get that out there, if that's through the website or. Well, it's going to be the newspaper. Or, it's going to be, you know, via the Herald and from Porch Forum and Facebook. And you're right. I mean, this way people are going to have to say whether or not, um, you know, they're going to run, uh, you know, for yes. you're going to have an open select board seat. And so people are going to have to put their name in, uh, you know, in advance. So it's printed on the ballot mm -hmm. with their consent. Of candidate. So 
They're going to know all yeah. the players. So we'll have to reach out to, you know, the Stan Capron and Jason Rogers, the people that fill in the uh, town agents <clears throat> and things and uh, get them to agree and, in advance. And I was just uh, thinking as well, um, we obviously need to get the town committee, town, town meeting day committee informed as well. Oh, sure. Yep. I'll, I'll let Rick. Um, um, and they may, on. they may be able to help with some of the process um, as well. Yeah, I'll let Rebe Rick Benson know. Yeah, I'll let Rick Benson know. He's, I think he's like, he's on that committee. I don't know if he chairs it or not, but I'll let he, him know and Pam and people. Yeah, I couldn't remember. It looks like Thomas has his yeah, hand. Saying, if you guys need any help with, uh, if you decide for hand count or need any help with that or anything, I'm volunteering for that. Oh, thank you. I'll let Pam know. She's the town clerk. So she's our local elect election official, but I will. Yeah, no, I, I was there for the presidential. Yeah, I'll let her know. One, one thing too, Therese, because if we do go, you know, go this direction, right? <clears throat> that we may want to, <clears throat> well, Sorry, we may want to ahead of time post what we believe are going to be the open positions. Mm -hmm. um, and then maybe because it always comes up at town meeting day, there'll be certain positions that will have <clears throat> that maybe we can post a little description of what that position is for. You know, what I mean, like, um, you know, we've, we've done things in the past with like bailiff and, you know, there's sure. what is that position really for and Okay, because you're going to have an opening on the select board and a lister position, I believe. <clears throat> but you're also going to have the the other positions too. I mean, you're going to have the treasurer in the oh right town clerk, and you're going to have um, the um, person to pursue legal town agent and all those yeah guys. yeah, and those and guys will probably run again. Certainly, Pam is, but yeah. But I know it always comes out to be someone will say, well, what does the town agent do? You know, yeah. and it may be a little blurb about what that is. Okay. Yeah, the Secretary of State puts something out that tells you what all the um, positions are about. So I bet I'll ask him about that. Because I know usually um, Mr. Benson does a good job of communicating that to everybody at town meeting day through moderator of what those positions entitle before we vote on them. But uh, or take nominations. Well, we won't have to elect a moderator this year because we won't have an open meeting. Ah, that's right. <laughs> there you go. That's right. That'll shorten it by a question. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Um, well, well, that that brings up a good point. Uh, we can do we these these elections by Australian ballot, but we, do we still have to open and close a town meeting to legitimize? the 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 voting of these various topics no no because um and so you would still probably vote on the moderator so you have one for next time but we used to use the moderator let me try to think well this is unusual because you're doing every single question so no because you're going australian ballot paul you're basically foregoing your town your town meeting is replaced by an informational meeting or hearing. Um, maybe some towns have their informational meeting chaired by their moderator. I don't know. Um, I've never done it. So um, I've just done regular informational meetings and the select board chair has always run it. But, um, but no, no, but just like the presidential election or a state election, anything it's, it's, you know, set by its hours and the warning that's generated and um, so I'll generate a warning, just like we usually do for town meeting. But this time, when you do an information and when I print it, <clears throat> certain items are are informational discussion only because they'll be voted on on, and then you in, you know tell them where and when and that sort of thing. Yep. But that's a great question. But yeah, that's the way it works. Okay, and there won't be any pie. I know. <laughs> We're all sad about the pie. <laughs> We're, we're, we're all, this is going to be the first holiday that we're all going to lose weight. Yeah. <laughs> we can't have gatherings. Now we can't have town meeting pie. We're all going to be like 10 pounds lighter. And we're going to need to make this up. Like four 
festival next year or something, we're going to have to really like click it to get extra food. You really don't think that's going to happen, do you? <laughs> no, not a chance, but. Look down at your waistline. <laughs> I mean, come on. I can dream, right? So, all right. Any further discussion on the town meeting day? Um, Lisa had a question. You said, Chris, the eyes have it. Did someone say nay about voting on the Australian ballot? I believe Dave was, Dave didn't vote for it, I don't believe. Did you say no, Dave? It's okay. We just want to get yeah, it. Yeah, that's correct. Okay. <laughs> no okay. problem. We just want it right in the minutes. Right. Okay. All right. And, and maybe Teresa, at the next meeting, the fourteenth meeting, maybe we just have a little more information on all. I'm I'm sure this is going to be a learning curve for you and everybody else. All the things we got to do. Yeah. Sure get this thing going uh, yeah it's really honestly it's not i mean you'll have a regular select board meeting that's most likely is going to be your informational meeting yeah. uh, and sometimes because you leave the fourth monday of the month so that will be your informational meeting which is right before the election sometimes i used to hold a special meeting that third monday before instead of part of the select board so you'll have two informational meetings and then it goes to um, but you'll mm -hmm. hold as a part of your regular select board meeting, most likely, unless you choose to do one um, as a special meeting. It's going to be just a select board meeting, and you're going to be doing the same thing, except fielding all your questions about um, will be strictly about the budget. Okay. And then, um, and, you know, so. But I'll let you know anything that comes up in the meantime. Sounds good. Okay, then we got the last piece of our budget discussion. We've been working on all the other pieces. We got the um, the public works, town office, constable, fire department. Yeah. So this is still a draft because I have not gone over it with Alan. Um, we were supposed to meet today, but he was busy. Uh, something came. All he was had to do something East Bethel for the um, putting up uh, guardrail near the East Bethel Bridge. So, um, so it's still, like I said, so it's still in draft form. Um, but I did try to, uh, I tried to include everything. So I know it's still, this is obviously at 3.46%, which is higher than we want to see it. Um, I know that, and um, but as I said, it's still a draft, but it's pretty complete. Um, not a lot of changes in the revenue. Um, it was up, but mainly that was because of land use. And I did speak to both to Judy and Louise about that to make sure I had the right number. Um, I also revisited the rec fees with Dietrich. And since we want to open the pool, but are unsure what the situation is going to be with COVID. Um, we just budgeted for pool passes and, um, but not lessons for like the younger kids, because if they can't get it within six feet, if you have a young, you know, maybe levels, uh, little to, you know, to level three, mm -hmm. COVID is still an issue. We can't get, you can't be that close to the kids. So we tried to budget money for the older children for lessons, um, so not a lot of change in the revenue. Um, it's up over last year, but 5.78%. Not a big, not a big jump in revenue, but we did take another stab at those. Um, how do you want to do this? Do you just want to go department by department through the budget, or do you just want to ask questions where you have some? Um, well, I was just going to based on examining and I went through it with Therese pretty detailed earlier on the phone. So um, I could just give a brief overview of kind of how I see the budget after talking with Therese and then, and then everybody else on the, on the board can weigh in. Um, if you have any individual questions in regards to a certain item or any of the items I don't bring up um, just kind of looking at the budget overall, the revenues overall are up $3,000 from last year. And, and in this draft form anyways, the costs currently are up 75,000 from last year. So 
So the net right now is an increase of $72,000 in the budget, which if we approve the budget the way it is right now, that would be 3.67 cent increase. Um, so <clears throat> just kind of going through um, some of the highlights of the budget, what I look for is any of the, you know, any new items. So, um, you know, most, most of the items in this budget are the same thing it was last year with just slight adjustments due to, um, you know, some insurance increases or something like that. Um, <clears throat> these, uh, my one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there was eight, eight items that kind of stuck out for me. Um, if you look at um, uh, under the public works, there is a request in there to install a repeater on North Road. Um, so there was a $7,000 that that's in there for that repeater. There's um, also under public works, um, if you'll see that we've gone from 20,000 to $30,000 in on the ditching item um, to increase some mileage on the ditching. Under the constable item, you'll see there's an increase of $7,400 for the, the, well, I'll call it a new speed sign that has solar capabilities. <clears throat> the speed signs that we have are, uh, I don't want to say outdated, but they're, they're getting pretty weathered and, and need to be replaced. Um, and, uh, you know, these, these speed signs would be something more self-efficient that you won't have to keep uh, charging batteries and running in and out. And, you know, people won't be calling in all the time to say, why is it not working? Or, you know, why did it work last week and not this week? Um, I do know from town meeting day, probably about five years ago, six years ago, this was on, on the docket for town meeting where, um, the town townspeople at that time were spoke very positively on wanting the speed signs in the downtown. So uh, now is basically the time before we use grant money to buy the signs. Now there is no grant money. So if we want to keep it going, we're going to have to purchase these. There's the under public parks and public places. There's um, some in increased money in there, as you saw, for mowing equipment. Um, there was some discussions that we've had over the past year, year and a half in, in regards to selling the van tracks and in return of selling the van tracks, buying a zero turn mower sweeper um, attachment stuff. Um, so that's in the budget. Um, as it was brought up to our attention, was it last meeting or the one before in regards to the, I believe it was Lindley, in regards to the wall in front of the municipal parking lot. So there's some money in there. Uh, we've increased that by 10,000 right now. We don't have the quotes for it, but increased the, um, the maintenance by 10,000 to do repairs to the stone wall in the municipal parking area. Um, under the town hall, um, if you've noticed out front of the town hall that there's some repointing of the bricks that needs to be done. So currently we're carrying some cost in there we're waiting for again, a Mason to give us a quote on both of those items, the repointing and the, and the wall. So there's um, an increase of $4,000 in there for the building repair. The library under, under appropriations, the library has asked for um, 2,500 extra dollars this year to replace some outdated computers. Um, so that is in there. <clears throat> and then a combination between the um, capital improvement fund and, um, you know, moving forward with the min new municipal garage, there's about an increase. Usually we budget about $55,000 for the capital improvement plan, 
but if we move forward with the garage, uh, we've budgeted a total of 80,000 this year, which would be um, money that we have in the fund plus paying our first payments on the garage type deal. So that's an overall increase of 25,000. So, so just those items, those eight items that I had there is about $73,000 in, well, I'll say extra costs that's in the, um, the budget, which, which about makes up the difference that we have. Um, there's a couple other things I just wanted to point out <clears throat> um, under the public works um, you know, even though we don't have it currently, we do have it budgeted for hiring another full-time person with, um, that also comes with full-time benefits because we don't know if the person's going to take a family plan or not. So you'll see that the difference right now, there's about a $27,000 difference in the highway department. And that is basically on that family plan. So if the person we hire takes the family plan, then it, it covers us. Um, if the person that we hire doesn't have a family plan, then it saves us money on that. Um, and then right now you'll see the ERATH uh, that we're budgeting 91,500 to pay the ERATH, which would be a combination of, of the work that was done this year and covering the Pinella Bridge. Um, the, and Teresa and I were talking a little bit about this earlier, you know, so that would cover everything that we, uh, over the last two years of, and Pinella Bridge of what we would have to pay as a town. Um, the Pinella Bridge, the likelihood on the schedule on that is, you know, realistically, it's probably not going to happen until summer, fall of next year. Yeah. So. Um, even though we've accounted for all the ERAF money, some of that ERAF money might not have to happen until the year pro year after, um, just due to the construction sequences. And then there's an extra 20,000 that we put in there in the, um, the reappraisal fund. Um, and as we know that we have a reappraisal that is, it is upon us. And, uh, you know, if that's in a year or two, and, um, you know, we had talked about some numbers in there on, you know, between uh, $250,000 and $300,000 to have the townwide reappraisal done. And I believe where are we at currently with that? We're about halfway. Half. I, yeah, depending on the cost. So, what did I tell you? 160 so I'm talking, I gave, told you a number, yeah. earlier, I think. So, but yeah, we just don't know how much it's going to cost for a townwide reappraisal. So. so, those are just some numbers to kind of, you know, at this point, do we budget more money for the reappraisal at this point? Do we not because we're going to have to probably for more money anyways? Um, you know, so that's just think, think about that. Did, um, <laughs> I did it again, Teresa. I got all these going backwards and forwards and these sheets. Uh, yeah, I think that was it. And that sounds like we hit the highlight. So that's just kind of in a nutshell, how the budget looks. Um, if anybody has anything specific that they would like to go through. Um, uh, again, um, as Mo knows, we're, you know, we've, uh, again, put $10,000 in the um, assessor services in the lister line, just in case, because we still are unsure of who will be doing what. And will we have to outsource any of that? We were pretty fortunate that so far that we haven't, um, but we want to make sure that we were covered in case we did. So a couple of things I wanted to mention were, yes, I'm waiting on a quote from the Mason for um, um, the town, uh, for the municipal parking lot and uh, just repointing the face of town hall. Um, so I, you know, I'm not, do I have enough money in there? I don't know. I, I'm not sure because I'm still waiting on that quote. So um, everything else in here, I think, was pretty much um, explainable. Obviously, the flashing signs, I found a place to get them cheaper than the one we bought originally. I called a gentleman in Barry um, who uh, got their business name. And he said those things basically are meant to fail. I feel like, you know, you've gotten a few years out of your two flashing signs, but I found a couple that are solar 
so we would be able to, um, you know, be less maintenance. So we're not always trying to change the batteries out. And one of them, Richard is pretty sure that the motherboard fried in it. Um, so when I called someone about fixing just that, he kind of laughed. And the motherboard on one of those is like 800 bucks. So that's kind of crazy. Um, yes, I budgeted some mowing equipment. Um, you know, I feel like that's an area where a, a zero turn, you know, where a mower would actually make someone more productive and would actually free up some time. So while it's a, a you know, a piece of equipment, it's still, um, you know, I think it would save us some man hours personally. Um, I've got a question on that. Oh, sure. Uh, instead of, the, what's the difference of the cost of having this subbed out to the people who are doing the cemeteries for more, doing all the mowing? That's Would a good we question. save money? I don't know. That's a good question, Mo. I, I, could, because we'd have less labor and, and, and no new machine. Yeah. Let me find out. I can ask s, &S Auto. Um, you'd actually only just have, you'd S &S lose S &S the maintenance mowing. on the equipment, but you still got the body is, is still working the number of hours. So it's it's the equipment cost that would be different. So s, &S mowing a uh, quote on <clears throat> uh, town property. Sure, I can get an estimate on that. That's a good idea. Um, and I had, we knew, had talked in the past about getting a zero turn if we sold the Ventrax, which I have not been able to sell the Ventrax and we didn't even have anybody in. Well, I had hoped the VTC would buy it, but it wasn't, um, they didn't feel it was, it wasn't going to work for what they needed. It seemed, it doesn't seem to work for what we needed. So um, we did have somebody uh, interest, possibly interested in it, a, a dealer out of Middlebury, but I haven't heard a number yet but I have a feeling it's, you know, I'm not sure if it's going to be what we wanted on it or not for it's half. So I kind of budgeted half the cost of the equipment in hopes I could sell the Ventrax because the longer we hold it, it's still not doing what we needed to do. Um, but I can ask about, I can look at an SNS mowing bill um, mow and figure out and find out what their hourly rate is and then ask Richard how much, um, how long it takes and maybe kind of back into a number there. And then uh, I can also ask well, yeah, for a quote. Yeah, they'd give you a bid on it anyways. Have we ever sold that case tractor from the sewer plant? Nope. Um, we had we had it out. Or Did it ever get it put out for bid? Yeah, honestly, I'm trying, I'm trying to remember. if I don't think it has been. I don't think so because we were going to and then we had COVID and we weren't going to be able to let someone come and see it. And then I think we just got basically carried away with the whole uh, water project. But I will double check on that because I know we uh, the board had given Tim the authority to sign the agreement and stuff. So let me follow up on that. I remember having a conversation with him at one point, and we he just we just hadn't got to it. And then, uh, but I'll ask him about it because I know oh, that that goes to the sewer fund. Right. I remember you specifically saying that. Uh, so I'll make right. a sewer sale and um, what would, would make any difference on somebody coming looking at it anyways because it's been an awful lot of equipment sold since March yeah that's true I know he's been busy so he's probably not meeting anyone but I'll ask him if he's put it out yet I know he had a couple people who would approach him about it right. and um, but I don't know if he ever put it on Craigslist so that's a great question I'll find out I'll ask him tomorrow um, so that was, so let's see, so we hit those and then <laughs> back to the Ventrack for a minute. Yeah. The only difference is in what piece of equipment you have. I mean, Richard is working eight hours a day doing whatever. Yep. So if the Ventrack is functioning, the difference would be you'd have a, a cost for that zero turn mower. It's not really going to change anything other than the equipment cost, because he's there one way or the other doing something. Well, right. I'm, I guess what I'm assuming is obviously if it has a bigger mower deck and he can mow more, then yes, he'll still be working for the town, but maybe he won't be mowing. Maybe he'll be doing something else. Oh. Um, and, uh, you know, certainly the Ventrax has its issues. It wasn't, it doesn't seem like it was designed for what they wanted it for anyways, originally. But, um, 
uh, like I said, I, you know, I know we had talked about getting rid of the bench racks and I just haven't had anybody who wants to buy it. So it feels like, you know, maybe we're not getting, it's just another piece of equipment that somebody bought that it wasn't really right for the job. So that's what we're doing. We're got, we're stuck with yet another piece. that's not quite doing it. So, um, my concern is that, um, in the past it has not been put away properly at the end of the year and taken care of. So I'm feeling like maybe we should, if we could cut bait and, and get rid of it and get something we do need that could be taken care of, then we'd be in a better position. But like I said, I, you know, I just put it in there because it had, was something we were still dealing with on, on my end. Um, the other thing was the talk about was the uh, town garage, what this, what you want to do there. So um, ideas I had was to set a cap of $700,000 for the town garage. Um, we've had the structural engineer come through and take a look, and that is going to save us some money on that end of the building. So we could reuse that um, the steel on that side, as well as the concrete. We will have to pour a little bit, put some stainless steel and some replace some grates um, when you first come into the building where the floor drain is, but we could add on to the back. Um, so what my thought was, we also have obviously a list now of problems at the town office. And so while we have updated the electrical and now have it spray foamed, um, we found out that the roof decking is rotten, you know, the siding is rotten, you know, I have a 10,000 gallon now fuel tank that apparently needs to come out. Um, so all sorts of presents happening down there. So if you have about 225,000 um, in the town building fund, we could put that into the town office, then you could borrow seven hundred thousand dollars for the town garage and we'd make a payment of about fifty thousand a year for 20 years so what we are putting away currently for the capital building fund is fifty five thousand a year so we would be able to do both buildings and still put away five thousand a year um moving forward while you're making a loan payment that would mean the town hall is repaired uh, the fire station is in good shape. We've been doing maintenance there. Then the town hall would, the town office would be fixed and the town garage would be. So you would end up with all of your town buildings, you know, not sewer water, but the other buildings, you know, in functional condition. Uh, one of the biggest complaints I receive is about the town office. People say they come in and while there's some properties on South Main Street that are not attractive, People feel that the town office is also an eyesore. So right now we know we have issues. We need a new roof. We need insulation up there. All the fascia, the soffits all rotted. The siding is not in great shape. And so, you know, structurally it's sound. And as we all know, I, it doesn't owe you anything. You know, it was given to you. You've obviously not done much to maintain it. I mean, you put a roof on it at some point, but which didn't work out for you. And uh, sorry. And uh, you made the town off manager's office, but that's really it. So, and while I know it's tough to put a cap on the town garage, it is what it is. You know, we can only build what we can afford. We can't, you know, put a one point five million dollar structure we can't that's you know and if we have to when we put it out if we have cuts we have to make up there then so be it you know i i like to say this is not build it and they will come you know we can't you know this is what we got this is what we can afford so that was my suggestion i told you i would try to get you two buildings for no raise in tax rate and that's what that would do for you but um, I did have to budget an extra money this this time because I had was kind of doing it. Going, oh, I need rent because I would have to put the town garage somewhere. You know, obviously, and that we'd have to do something in the summertime or whenever when they were building it. I'm a little concerned about metal because of COVID, how far out a metal building would be. Um, but I won't know until we put an RFP out. That loan process would have to go before the voters. Right. Yep. And it could go on as a town meeting question. Yep. 
on the Australian ballot. Because we'd end up with basically a depleted capital building fund, except for the five thousand dollar amount, which is if something went wrong somewhere else, could get eaten up pretty quick. Sure. Yep. But with you know the we know the town garage we know the fire department is in good shape their furnace is fine we know the same thing about town hall that's in good shape you put a bunch of money in there you're still making that loan payment um so really <clears throat> as far as buildings go it leaves you with the town office and um and the garage we could also say you know we do less and who knows once we get an estimate out there the town garage or even the town office, maybe it comes in less than my estimate. Um, or maybe we say, okay, we're gonna cap it. Maybe you wanna leave 20,000 in the capital building fund. Then, so we say, okay, we're gonna spend X amount on the town office and the same thing. We get what we get for that price. Does it make sense to roll this over into the discussion about the parcel on Church Street? Um, so town office. Uh, you, you can talk. Yeah. Um, obviously that's on the agenda is the places. Um, I received a call. I talked to Chris about this, uh, that I received a call from Mrs. Placey's nephew who said that apparently at one point she, Mrs. Placey or Mr. had had a conversation with Del Cloud and the town might be interested in the land next to the municipal parking lot up by the white church. I said, okay. I'll talk to the board. Um, there was no <clears throat> given. Um, for me personally, my opinion is that I don't think we need anything else off the tax rolls. Um, it's obviously, um, they have not evicted the tenant. I asked that, so there's somebody still living there. And um, if that property was to be cleaned up, you don't have a lot of land in the village, it would be nice for somebody to build a new home there, which would be nice increase of the, you know, on the tax rolls for you. Um, I'm not sure what your plan had been in the past. I've heard rumor of town office. Uh, we're certainly not gonna build a new town office over there for 200,000. And uh, then I'd heard rumor of tearing it down, the trailer out and then making it parking, which, um, you know, the municipal parking lot in the village isn't, fully utilized so I'm not sure I don't I guess I don't know the history of it Paul what was the plan yeah, the thought, I think the thought was the municipal that would be a place for the town office to go back in the past yep and uh, you know if we're going to put 270 some odd thousand dollars into the creamery does it make sense to even think about doing something up there instead yeah right yeah, just to restate that, I was like 200 or 220 was the number for the town office. And it could be cheaper. I mean, I just, I added up a bunch of numbers together for different, you know, costs. And, uh, and hopefully it comes in, you know, less than that. And we could also scale back. I mean, what we know what we have to do is the roof, the siding, um, you know, upstairs, insulate, <clears throat> put in the, you know, we know there's some things we have to do. But obviously, if we did nothing, what's going to happen to them? Why would someone buy it if we were going to sell the town office? Um, and we also, you know, you're going to try to sell it with a 10,000 gallon buried fuel tank that someone said, pull it before it leaks. So, you know, <laughs> that's Harper environmental. Well, you can leave it there till it leaks. And then when the sludge comes out, you really got to get it out. My gosh. We've also discussed all the building's flaws in public session. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> You know, but you know, everybody would know by walking through them. So, um, you know, certainly we've painted and, you know, so we know we'd like to cover the asbestos tile in the office, but. I think we just have to be careful of, you know, spending more than the building's work type deal. And Oh, sure. You know, absolutely. I know originally, I know originally the game plan was to build a new structure for the public works. In the meantime, you know, figure out how many tens of thousands of dollars need to go into the um, municipal office to make it work for, let's say, 10 or 15 years until we could do the opposite, build a new municipal office and, sure. you know, be debt free of the, um, <clears throat> of the other one. Yeah. So, well, I, know I think too, I mean, the key is going to be that obviously is going to be the roof, um, I think. And, um, if we, you know, do the roof, then, you know, the siding and who's to say my numbers could be high. I mean, I certainly was taking everything off the report 
um, that we have adding it all together saying, okay, if we did all this stuff and, and maybe it's, I could get it, you know, we could get a cheaper price and maybe it's, that's it. We just say, okay, we'll do it with a roof. And, um, and I would say as far as the church street property goes, is, you know, you know, in the past, we, there's been different things, like you're saying from potential, uh, municipal office to parking to other things. And, you know, it's probably not a bad idea, Therese, maybe just to reach out to, to the owners and say, you know, what are you looking to get for it? And, yeah. and, and we can just kind of kick it around from there. Is it, is it something worth the town acquiring or not? Or um, yeah. doesn't hurt to see what they want for it. And, you know, and then we can kind of go from there. I know be, the last thing that we had talked about was it was right on, you know, Greg was heading out of town. We were, um, um, you know, the, some of the buildings in town, in the downtown were, were being purchased at that time. And the thought was if, if the downtown does come to flourish and like, like we all hope that we need more parking than just a municipal office parking or municipal parking that that piece up there could potentially be parking for, I think we had talked about either tenants of some of the park, you know, of either some of the apartments or even some of the um, day, we'll call it day tenants that, you know, like, you know, the Arnold block and people that, you know, may work, but could walk across the bridge, you know, for parking type deals. So I, I don't know, I, I just, I would just say, just reach out and see what we can, what they want for that property and, you know, just go from there and it doesn't hurt to ask. Yeah, that's fine. I, I'm happy to do that. And then, um, uh, so what was, hang on a second, Trapper. <laughs> Sorry, the dog's carrying on over here. And uh, so um, I, I said this to Chris earlier, so I'll have to, so I'd say it to you is, you know, probably December 14th would be the, your next meeting is when you're gonna adopt the budget, you know, for sure. So I will meet with Alan in the meantime and uh, take a look at some of these other items, uh, revisit a couple of them, but you're going to have to make a decision about certainly about, um, well, about um, the town garage. And well, you know, I, I guess my opinion, you know, on the budget end of things, the, you know, setting aside money for a project, if it goes forward or not, is not a bad thing. Right. I mean, oh, yeah. you know, we have it in our fund and, um, you know, go from there. I, you know, you know, we can have all those discussions, <clears throat> you know, more when we know how much it's going to cost us and things like that. Um, I do think that, we, you know, like we've done every year is kind of, you know, I think the board does need to kind of pick a spot of which, you know, if our budget does increase by how much, um, you know, um, yeah, I know I like to use cents. Some people like to use percentages, but, you know, um, I know we've kind of have told the the taxpayers over the last three or four years that, you know, to get to where we need to be, you know, we were going to do gradually increases of, you know, two to three cents a year to get there. Um, last year, unfortunately, with the ERAF, the ERAF made up of five cents worth of debt. Um, and this year, the ERAF makes up about four cents of the debt based on what we're currently budgeting so yeah but we did not have that big of an increase last year on the tax no rate. no no but that i'm just showing you that yeah yeah last year for instance if yeah. we didn't have the e-wrap yeah we've gotten everything we did and the budget would have went down to by two cents right right so, i think um, we had about a two percent <laughs> increase last year i think so i i always shoot for three this is high i know it's high but it's still draft because yeah. i haven't talked to alan I've got an extra 10 grand in repairs and maintenance for him that I'm not sure is accurate. Mm -hmm. um, and I certainly, there's a couple things I could prioritize over another. I think that the repeater is a higher priority than the mower because the repeater is safety. There's times when the guys cannot right. get hold of somebody. They don't have cell service or the radio is not working, but mm -hmm. I can certainly sort that out. As far as the town garage is concerned, um, that's fine. I can take out that extra 25,000 um, that I was thinking about for rent. The only reason I was thinking that 
um, you guys really need to start thinking about making a decision is because we are going to have Australian ballot already. So it would be the time right. to do a bond vote instead of having to do a bond vote later, which is easy. We did it with the water. I mean, easy peasy, mm -hmm. you know, three minutes count that thing. I was there. And um, so, but still it's another election and it's a whole other process. So it's mm -hmm. something to certainly think about. Yeah, it just, it just seems like, I mean, I'm a dreamer. You know, I think we should, you know, shoot for zero, but that's, that's a pipe dream. Right. But things are, you know, when, when, I, when I talk to folks on the street, everybody understands that certain things increase every year, uh, health insurance, you know, things like that increase every year. But it seems like there are several items that are increasing in this budget that are not necessarily those types of things. These are additional things like the wall repair, um, you know, some things like that that aren't just natural increases. So sure. those are the things we need to look at, I think. And, um, and Absolutely. And I can, like I said, it's why it says draft on it for a reason. But I also think, mm -hmm. you know, you have to be stewards. And you guys know that wall has been failing for, or that, that that stone wall has been in disrepair for a while and it certainly was very noticeable this year during construction we didn't want to touch it this year because we knew we were going to be there with vibrating buckets and vibrating rollers and things like that so you know we can't kick every can down the road but i certainly am making a revisit and as i said it's a draft and i don't have an estimate <clears throat> i did put out um, a request and sent photos to a mason to get um, you know, estimates on repointing the front of town hall, as well as that I could also reach out to the historical society and say, hey, you know, uh, you guys let's see if they uh, have money to put into, um, you know, paying, they pay you $200 a month rent for a town hall. So yeah. to see if there's a way for, you know, people to come up, but I'm certainly, ha I plan on taking another stab at it. It's, it's just a drop. Sure, Therese, I'm curious, um... I know Preservation Trust has released a whole bunch of new grants, and a lot of them are facade-based um, on historical buildings. Are municipalities allowed to apply for Preservation Trust grants? Because that could be a potential way to address the town hall. It wouldn't it wouldn't cover the wall, the stone wall, but something like town hall. It's obviously a historical building, and you know, if grant money could cover that piece, that could be, I, I can forward you some emails that I've gotten from them recently. Um, yeah, that'd be great. I have, yes, I think municipalities. Yeah, we've gotten one from Preser Preservation Trust before. So yeah. that would be good. If you could send me that, that'd be great. Yeah. We could see it's not a bunch of the building. I mean, I only walked around and saw the front part, but I mean, you know how that is. You've got to main, you know, it'd be nice if we've caught it early if we can get it taken care of, but. Yeah. Um, I want to say they just released some last last week or the week before that um, might address this exact type of thing. Um, so I'll forward you what I found. Oh, that would be great. Yeah. And so, like you said, there's another 10,000 too in, in repairs that maybe I can take out of Alan's budget. I can split up the ERAF. And so there's definitely some things I can do. I just wanted everybody to see. I went through the first time and it was, you know, much lower mm -hmm. and then went through and was like, okay, what are some pending items here that we have to address? And so I'm certainly, um, you know, like I said, haven't gone over Alan's budget with him so we can go through again and <clears throat> take a stab at things, but it's great to have a discussion about them. So Therese, under the long-term debt for the town hall, do you have a, any concept of how much is left on that debt retirement? <laughs> I don't have my town report here with me, but if you have your town report at home, Paul, yeah. um, there's a long-term debt schedule in there and there's still quite a ways to go. I want to say it's like 2030 something, maybe. Okay. I feel like you're, oh, you know, maybe partway through that loan. All right. I'm sorry. I don't have my town report here. No, it's okay. I can check it out. Thanks. Sweet. All right. Good. Thanks. Um, so just, just for fun. That grant that I was talking about, um, you would qualify for, but the application's due by December 14th. Oh, that's fine. Send it over. I'll take yeah. it. <laughs> I forwarded it to you already. I have so you have plenty of time. Yeah, you I have to approve it November. tonight so you can apply in time? There you go. I have one due November 27th, so <laughs> I'm still for the Sand Hill. And um, I sent that to Two Rivers, Rita, who was great at Two Rivers. She's awesome. She's taken a peek at it and gave me some advice and pointers. So... We'll get that one back out too. And 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 Teresa and I were talking about it earlier, but 
you know, looking at this for a second time, I would think that the library, there would be some money out there for technology equipment, computers, or, or uh, if you wrote to one of these manufacturers, Dell or somebody, I would think that they would want to donate, you know, to a library. Um, yeah. yeah. There's and probably some money out there for that somehow. Yeah, or else at least budget for one a year instead of, you know, they all died at once. That, that's rough. Yeah. That stinks. Yeah, Lisa. Um, being on the, the trustees for the library, we already do get the um, computer secondhand from a company. Um, one of the trustees' sons works for him down in Boston, and so that we get their secondhand computers, and he manages them for us. Um, I think it's just a matter of um, they're getting increased usage. I mean, people are coming in and they're applying for welfare, and they're applying for jobs, and they're you know getting some training on them, um, mm -hmm. you know, all that kind of stuff. It's getting used for a lot of different things, and I think that. Um, right. They're just looking ahead and saying these particular we've been given the high sign these computers aren't going to last much longer yeah so, um i hear what you're saying but i you know i think like everybody grants and foundations are struggling too so um however if you hear of any particular grants that you think will do that we're more than happy to apply yeah i'm going to take a look because um yeah, I actually have a friend who's a librarian, and so she runs a library in another town. So I'll see because she was seemingly like always, whoops, always getting grant money. And um, so let me, I'll pick her brain, Lisa. See that would we, be great. Thank you. See if we can find something. But um, but yeah, I noticed in the letter that they all had kind of like worn out at one time. I was like, oh, man, that stinks. <laughs> <laughs> so so we'll see what um i'll see if i can find anything for you okay i'll ask her especially with covid you know i mean they must know there's a burden on small libraries right and it's um you know we're we're working on updating the collection so that it's you know more um pertinent to modern you know readers and um, all of that kind of thing. And it's, it's all happening at once, but it's, uh, you know, it's, it's been a relatively low cost, uh, feature for the town over the years. So, sure. Yeah. That, so, yeah. so the library is not part of the town, right? They're not owned. So do you guys have some sort of like investments or something that, yeah, you know? yeah. there's, um, um, Mary Branlier set mm -hmm. up, a fund for them so it basically runs off that fund um which is great some years and not so great others um so um anyway you guys maintain your own building and all that right i mean that's all for you guys yeah mm -hmm. I wonder. Mm -hmm. yep yep interesting so well i'll see if i can help i'll send her an email tomorrow okay thank you yeah So anything further in regards to the discussion of the budget this evening? And, you know, this is kind of the first time that we've now kind of put together the draft budget, you know, yep. gone from sectionals to one piece now. And, you know, that would just a little bit of tweaks and we're probably there, so. Yeah, and I'll revisit it. Like I said, I think it's December 14th. You're gonna have to pass it. I'll double check now. I um, and look at the uh, municipal calendar one more time. Maybe you have another shot at it two weeks later. I'll find out. But I did get a, everybody else has signed off except for Alan. And, and like I said, there's a couple huh? things in his budget that I estimated um, high in. So, I, but I want to, to double okay. check him. And I also think I forgot to tell you because um, I don't think I wrote it down. It happened suddenly. It was uh, Jason Ballou resigned on November 16th. Uh, no notice just gave me his keys on Monday morning work two hours and was done he has a new job uh, at UPS and certainly wish him well so um, I'm not I don't think I had maybe you all know that at some point but I well we saw the ad in the, I saw the ads in the paper and there was kind of a question I was going to ask you about it yeah I'm sorry I forgot it it, it happened suddenly and um, 
So, and uh, obviously I have an ad in the paper and uh, interviewing a temp, uh, another seasonal tomorrow, just to get us through, just to get us through. Uh, so we're going to see, but um, yeah, it, I, it was um, unexpected. So. So we'll, uh, Doug, we'll see you at six o'clock tomorrow morning. Yeah. <laughs> Doug, <laughs> I gotta tell you, Doug has been great. Hold on, let me make that. Yeah. <laughs> He's been mentoring, and uh, he has been wonderful, and uh, doing some driving with uh, with Dave Bergeron, and um, we may have him do some more work with other people. Uh, there's talk of having Doug come in and do some greater lessons with people who want to learn how to drive the greater. Um, mm -hmm. So Doug has been wonderful, as well as Dietrich told me he was great on last Friday and helped her with lighting and flags. And so she said that was great and that her and Doug had a good time. And, and, um, and it looks really nice in the downtown. Yeah. So and they're thank you, some, Doug, for all your hard work down there. They're putting some yeah. more lights out. And I know Paul, you know, washed buildings and uh, we're getting some lights, uh, some things down that Kevin... Barry agreed to put in his windows. Um, there's some old lights up at the shop that used to be um, decorations up at the shop. Mm -hmm. They're gonna get a move downtown. I think Dave Sanborn offered to clean them up. And so it's great. So if people can really try to get people to light up Bethel. And um, so it was a really nice push. And, and so thank you to Doug and everybody uh, who helped and there's a helping now. I know Kathy and Dietrich were going to go out and put lights on the bridge either today or tomorrow at four. Nice. Okay. Uh, is there anything that uh, we haven't gone over yet, Therese, that's on your town manager report? Honestly, Chris, I don't know. I don't have it in front of me. <laughs> I think we just about covered it all. But I think so. I didn't cover. I don't have the agenda, and I don't have my town manager. You mentioned they were finishing up doing the guardrail over in East Bethel today. Is that? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, because we had to take down. We had that cable railing there, so we had to remove that. And mm -hmm. so um, Lafayette was coming in to do some guardrail, guardrail there. Um, oh, you know, when we finished the project on Spooner Road, I talked to. Uh, Bill and Michael Crossman, they both were very, very happy and said they thank you very much and that I wouldn't hear from them again. So uh, <laughs> we'll put that in the minutes. And uh, so they were great. Um, so that's done. The uh, Dietrich talked to Michael Parker about the skate park. There was a couple issues there um, that BMX bikers, uh, I think, had brought to their attention. Dietrich met Michael there, he, he skateboarded it and he understood some of the issues and was gonna take care of that. And Dietrich is working currently on getting a price for um, redoing the piping, tearing out the side, uh, I'm gonna use the term sidewalk, but the, the walkway, I guess, around the pool, that's mm -hmm. gotta come out and we've gotta redo all that piping underneath. We're thinking that uh, we may have an issue where uh, water and the fiberglass yeah. in the pool so um, we're obviously you, trying to get that done sooner rather than later because we'd have some savings in this budget that we're in due to COVID and not opening the pool. So she's going to get us an estimate on that because we need to redo the piping. And, and um, we also, they said that the blacktop, the way that is, it's not reacting right, I guess, with the fiberglass around the pool. So it uh, looks like we need to do some work. Okay there and but and you, she's going to get some pricing on that and you mentioned you were drafting some rfps there for pinello bridge and yes for i started on pinello bridges rfp because i have a hydraulic study back from ripple uh chris bump at the state said he'd help me with that i started that this weekend um and then i am on hold uh, i need to do an obviously an rfp for the town garage um and maybe any town office work so but um, my focus will be first will be Pinello Bridge just because uh, I think it'll be, you know, if we're going to go with a Bailey or maybe type bridge, mm -hmm. uh, whatever name brand you choose, uh, we need to get that out so people can get that. There's an order time, a wait time on that. Right. We had the select board meeting minutes from 
November 9th. Does anybody have any thing to address with those? Are we good to approve those as noted? Motion to approve as written. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Nice. And then in our packets, there was some information. Obviously, the fourth board's uh, committee's meetings were in there. The conservation committee meeting that was in there as well, and the DRB. Um, and then there was also um, uh, where we stand currently on our budget at 33%. There's some minutes from the planning commission and DRB. It says design review board. It's actually development review board. Oh, that's me. <laughs> I took those minutes, so sorry. <laughs> Well, that's that's a habit. Um, um, she was trying to get out of having to do it now. Yeah, so. yeah. No, I I did. I gotta find something. You know, it's been too long. No, it, it's good. <laughs> so I'm glad that you said. Paul's that. been stewing at home in this whole COVID thing. That's a that's a habit. I'll have to fix those. Um, but that was a good joint meeting, and and um, everybody now on the committee has a copy of the town plan and the zoning regs. So. Mm -hmm. uh, Rick uh, Benson, bless his heart, has agreed to be the chair of the planning commission for one year. Oh, nice. Uh, I, yeah, I talked him into it. <laughs> so I was like, I was gonna say. Well, yeah. you know, it was tough because there's all new members and he had a history. He was hoping to get somebody to take over the chair of the DRB, but that did not happen mm -hmm. for him. So, but however, um, Brad Andrews and, and Rick, came to uh, the planning commission men. And so we've merged the two committees, you know, to work on the bylaws for now. And, and um, so hopefully at the end of the year, uh, when, you know, once the year's up, somebody will step up and do it, but we still really need more planning commission members. Um, right. But right now our focus is obviously redoing the, um, or updating the town zoning regulations, but okay. God bless him. He's, he's agreed to do it, but. But the members so far, uh, Gene Krause, he was great. Uh, Kyle and Zoe Cartwright were both there. They were great, Wayne. So, uh, you know, so far the planning commission members uh, and Rita, I think Rita's gonna stick with it. Um, were, you know, really participating, but, um, but um, so Doug, we'll be sure to tell Joanne, Doug, that we're still looking for planning commission members. <laughs> So will we? Get, thank you. <laughs> will we get the solid waste um, budget review in their next one? I wasn't there. Oh, sorry. I printed hers earlier, Jen's uh, earlier for the. I didn't see it anyways, but it may not be. I had printed it for her uh, or for Mo, I guess. Excuse me, okay. um, for their meeting prior. Um, so I probably just forgot to make you guys a copy of it. But um, I, I'd given it to the BRTS board. And I didn't, I didn't really have any questions in regards to the budget. I think the only one I had there, I asked you earlier there, it hadn't shown any, um, any sand. hitting the sand, but I yeah. uh, said that that was yeah, we process. So. Oh, so the town office is uh, uh, Friday, usually the thanks Friday after Thanksgiving, people take a vacation day. So the office is closed. Um, that's the case this time. I'm not sure if I'm not there, I may work from home part of the day. I don't really know right now. <clears throat> See what, what, how it goes. But anyways, so the office, no one will be there on Friday. Alrighty. Do we have anything else to come before the board this evening? I move we adjourn. Second. Okay.
All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Well, thank you, everybody, this evening. We'll thank you. On the 14th. All right. And I'll leave that. Um, I'll put these resolution on the clipboard. So if you guys could walk in the back door and sign it, and Dave, I'll make you a better copy of the budget. I know the scan, I guess, didn't come out right. So sorry about that. Okay. So, Therese, who's going to be doing payroll this week? Um, it's already done. Uh, Dietrich did it today. Okay. So but it's. All... Give me a call so I can come in and look at it. Oh yeah, yep. It's um all it's it's all done, so you can come whenever you want. Okay. <laughs> Trace, if you're making Dave a copy of the budget, could I grab one from you as well? It is hard to read. Yeah, I didn't realize that until I was printing a copy for Chris. Um, I and then I was saw I was like, I don't know why I did that, but I'll make a note. Yeah, I'll give you one. Um, I might have been making up some numbers in there. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it wasn't good. So Lindley and Dave copied awesome. the budget. All right, I'll put that on there too. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Hold on. Yeah, absolutely. You got something you want to say? Have a good night. Yep, you too. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Hey, guys.